Come now, let's test ya. Best you come with me. I'll be your mother, you know no mother me. I'll bring you honey from the sweetest honey tea. And I'll cover you like that one for me. So, see, I never thought about all the issues with like the marketing issues with the app and all that, but to to me, it just made it made sense because it's like, oh, these are maybe like like minded people, and when you have like minded people together, then you can just like cut through the BS, right, and just get straight to like, okay, let's like do this thing together. I will say, I know that like you hauling is a thing, and like shacking up is a thing too um, from my background. Um, that's like frowned upon. I myself, as many times as I've been in love, I have never, ever gotten close to shacking with anyone or you hauling with anyone. So like, yeah, what what is, like, how do you know? How do you know when you're ready to like, literally like merge a life with someone and be like, okay, yeah, like, let's do this. I'm gonna wake up to you every day. And then quick disclaimer for those who don't know what you hauling is, it is the phenomenon where it was derived from lesbians, but now can apply to any queer person. It's a phenomenon where they just move in, could be a week in, a month in, two or three months into the relationship, just move in together. Like they literally rent a U-Haul, pack it up, and move into one of the partner's homes. And then uh, if someone wants to clarify what shacking is, because today was the first time I heard that word. My favorite way to say shacking is you got to say shacking. It has to be said with judgment. Yeah. And it's a phrase that's common in the church. Maybe, I wonder, I'm curious to know if it's like a Black church thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, Shacken, um refers to basically a couple living together that is not married. Um, very often they would reference Three's company, but I don't know that that was in fact Shacken. I don't remember. It's been so long. Yes, I'd love to tackle this question as I'm shacking right now. Um, so I feel like you hauling is the best thing since sliced bread. Why? I mean, it was derived from, from lesbians because there's this idea that queer relationships move quicker. Not just an idea. I feel like it's the truth. Um, people want to debate me, debate your mama, don't debate me. It's the truth. I feel like in queer relationships, there's something to be said about being with someone who understands who you are and who you love. Like the gender identity of it all and literally the sexual orientation of it all. Like if you can understand who I am, uh, it just makes the love stronger, right? And I think for a lot of folks, queer identities, um, their queer identities have been stigmatized in a lot of different spaces, particularly love. And it hasn't been, you know, I think when we, when we're taught to imagine what love looks like, it's always very cishet. So queer folks kind of just like do it differently. We say, okay, it's revolutionary for us to be in love. So let's take it from zero to 10,000, like real quick. And so I would say, just to make it personal, me and my partner have been together since November and really, really, really early on. I mean, we're already, we're still early on, but like really early on, like first week, first two weeks, we were clear that we wanted to be with each other. Like we were clear that like we were in love. We were clear that we wanted to make this work. Um, and, you know, I feel like that magic and that spark, I've, I got that spark with her uh, in the same time that it took for some relationships, it took months. Um, and it's not something I, you know, set out to do and or planned. Uh, and alas, here I am shacking for a month um, in Chicago, visiting her. Um, and we have plans to, you know, hopefully sometime in the future, uh, make this a permanent thing. And, you know, I'm you hauling them happy about it. And if anybody has anything to say about it, again, argue your mama and don't argue me. I mean, I think that's a really good transition to what I was wondering. Do you think that, I'm just curious to know, do you think anyone in your family will have something to say about it? Cause like, you can't like discreetly 
Shaq or U-Haul in this situation because you'll be moving to like in for context y'all like BC lives in the borough that they grew up in like Mm -hmm. like you leaving for something other than college even when you left for college I'm sure that was huge so like you leaving for a partner Mm -hmm. how would your family feel um I mean I guess one that question I guess is predicated on the belief that my family's feelings moves me emotionally and (laughs) (laughs) like my decision making isn't determined by how anybody feels but me and you know this person that I'm with however I think it is a fair question to ask you know how they feel about it um I, in transparency, I feel like I got with this person after I moved through a lot of trauma with an ex. Um, Last year was a really difficult year in the ways that I've navigated intimacy and relationships. And I didn't think I'd be with anybody ever again. And I think what made this relationship so special and what made me want a U-Haul was because it came at the time that it did, right? And the love felt realer than it's ever felt. Um, So I think right now my immediate family who saw me go through the trauma from that the last relationship that I was in and the 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 blowback from that. I think my immediate family who saw me through all of this would be happy that I'm happy right like happiness by any means necessary because I was so unhappy for a really long time. I think that you know people outside of my mother and my sister will just be judgy inherently, right? It didn't matter if this, but I think their judginess wouldn't come from the shacking up. I think their judginess would come from the shacking up with another woman and like the queerness of it all. I think they would question that. Um, I also wanna be clear that yo, shacking up, while I feel like it's stigmatized across the board, in my experience, Black cis het men get to shack up and still get supported by their families. And other people just don't. Like, it, it's, I've seen Black cis het men shack up with people, have 47 babies with them, and be able to take those babies to their parents' house to watch them while they go run the streets. And that would never be true for me. That would absolutely never be true for a lot of femmes that I know in their families, a lot of Black femmes. Um, so there is, there are a lot of like real misogynistic and misogynoirist like aspects to shacking and you hauling um, that we, we need to unpack. Yeah. And it's, and that made me think of like how my mom used to always say like, you know, he won't buy the cow if he can get the milk for free. And it's like, so I'm a, I'm a whole cow. That's, that's. That's who I am. Like, what? Who said I want to be bought? All right. Maybe See, I just want to get rid of some of this milk. Hey. Oh, <laughs> I'm just talking. This is not my lived experience. You just egg stuff on. You just petty. <laughs> Uh, But I want to speak on what BC said about that aspect of like going through a very turbulent post breakup and then being like, I give up. This is not going to be for me anymore. I ain't ever loving again. This is, I'm not cut out for this. And then like through the magical workings of the universe, the right person is planted in front of you. And that's what happened with me and Dev. And yeah, as also as a queer, another queer couple that you hauled it. Another thing that is an important aspect is we live in a capitalist system. Anything to save rent, because <laughs> that's how me and Dev came together. We, I was like, my lease is up, your lease is up. Do you just want to move in with me and my roommate at this nice place that we got and help us like pay cheaper rent? We're both like struggling college students about to finish our degrees and not knowing <laughs> what's going to happen next. Like sometimes we do it out of necessity and just like resource saving and sharing like the love is there but also we live in a capitalist system let's just buddy up and save some money while we're at it yeah um following that i I forgot who asked or like the question about like what makes you like want to shack up or u-haul I feel like when Sebastian and I started dating, I knew right away that we were going to be like, we were friends. Like, so when we moved in <laughs> three months into dating, I wasn't really scared because I was like, we're cool. We're friends. Like, if it doesn't work out, we're, we'd still be cool. But like, let's do this. Like, 
we just graduated college or trying to figure stuff out like why not do it with someone that you trust and that you really feel confident or comfortable with and just do it and now it's been four years later and we're still together so <laughs> apparently it's working i feel like three months is that magic number for queer couples if you don't u-haul it within three months are you even queer <laughs> yes well, I'm so set, y'all. <laughs> well, this is awkward. Well, like, I really love what BC was also saying about, like, the love. And it's just, like, it's also come up, like, the way our parents met or loved each other or, like, being told through the Holy Ghost. And it's just, like, concept of, like, love stories that... Uh, it makes me think of Monique because, like, when in a, if you don't know, me and Monique met at a, a acting academy, and there was a week where we had to do our own produced work, and Monique came in with this monologue about love and being desired and wanted. She made the entire ensemble cry. It was so beautiful, and I think Monique has such a beautiful way of writing and working with love that. And then when she speaks about her love for love stories, I just love hearing her talk about it. So Monique, I'm gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, totally put me on the spot, oh my gosh. I mean, I do, I definitely, I love love and it's in some ways I wonder, I think my writing at least has been influenced by this, by something that I've had for like moments in time and have never been able to hold on to for a long time. Um, and I, and also like I grew up watching like soap operas with like my grandmother and my mom and like um, watching like the old school like love stories with like Cary Grant and like Audrey Hepburn. So I, I grew up like listening to these like legendary and watching these legendary love stories that all the women in my family connected to. And what struck me as I got older was like, y'all are, we all were praising like all these love stories that like don't reflect the reality that we're living in. Like my grandfather was a Rolling Stone and there were several, <laughs> several in my family were Rolling Stones. So it's, it's, I feel like many, a lot of the women in my family have been like longing for this thing that they've never had. And who I guess I am too, <laughs> but, um, but I will say that, um, I mean, stories like, Deb's grandparents and like even Rye's parents, like for me, it's like, okay, like it's possible. It's possible for cishet folks. Like, cause, cause I mean, I know like, I'm like, I feel like the shit in the cishet category is effed up if you ask me. But anyway, that's, that's not the conversation. <laughs> we praying for you, baby. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. But um, yeah, I think, um, and you know, even like, I can't think of any, my mother would hate me, but I can't think of any like epic love stories in the Bible, but I do, my love um, for love stories is definitely, it's really just influenced by like family and this idea that, you know, like the creator possibly created this like person that's like uniquely fit for you um, and fit for you in this given time. And I just, I love that. That is, uh, that moves me so much. One thing I said um, when I, um, so I, I mentioned that I found this great love after something so difficult. And I'll say that like, when I was actually um, talking to someone else before this current partner, and when that didn't work out, I was done. Like I had said it to so many people, like so many friends that if I'm not looking for anything anymore, I'm not looking for love anymore. I'm not, I'm, I'm done with this. Either it's gonna come to me or I'm not looking for it at all. And I'll focus on work. I'll focus on my career and other things. And I was done with love stories, right? So much of, I, I never give up on love. That's been my narrative about love and relationships for my entire life. Anytime I've had a bad breakup, I'm like, I'm not gonna blame love and the beauty of love like, and give up on it over a breakup. And this time I was serious and I gave up on it. And how fitting of a love story it is that the minute I give up on it, it comes. 
So me giving up on love wound up being another love story. Dramatic. <laughs> but. Yeah, and going back to that, yeah, there's a lot with like that moment of completely giving up and lo and behold, your person just appears. But I really, I also identify with Monique and BC in the sense that's like, now that I like look back into my early baby gay years, I was such a like romantic and idealist idealistic person when it came to like romance and love that I'm like I don't know how I survived those first couple of years because like I was because it was so bad that I almost ventured like very slut shamey territory when it came to like the hookup apps and all that I would if I'm out myself but like at some point my grinder profile said something about looking for the right person if that's not you don't bother hitting me up <laughs> And it's so embarrassing to say now, and I hate that I actually used, I used to say that. Um, but it's like, you know, through our relationships, through navigating these murky waters of love, it's like you become jaded. And like now I'm just trying to like reteach myself to love and let myself be loved. And also like, how do I go back to that idea, like idealistic person, but like in a way that actually that manifest itself in the way I, I love myself and I love my partner and I love my friends and my community so yeah you know I love love stories so much like it's funny because I talk about how I've never been in love but like I love love like the way that BC has to constantly hear me calling her asking how's redacted the name of her partner uh, <laughs> um it's ridiculous but what I don't love it's cliches about love that <laughs> that no baby let's let's be real about it and on that note I'm curious to know how y'all feel about when RuPaul says if you don't love yourself how up you gonna love somebody else thoughts feelings discussion I feel like that's not a very trauma informed response. <laughs> Cause I feel like oftentimes for trauma manifests in like codependency and like you feel a need to love others even though that love isn't there for yourself. And um, I do feel like you, there has to be a semblance of like knowing yourself and loving yourself in order to maintain a healthy relationship. But like oftentimes that's not given to us and like in our trauma, we just cling on to relationships, even if they're not good for us, for the sake of wanting to be desired and love. So although I, but I also feel like there's some points where it's like your love isn't there yet, but through loving someone else, that itself can be reflected back to you. And you start learning how to love yourself through loving this other person you're sharing space and um, life experience with. So like, I like, it helps to have that love for yourself, but I don't think you need it from the get go. Cause in the end, I feel like if it's a healthy relationship, that relationship should allow yourself to learn how to love yourself reflected back through that person that you're loving. Absolutely. Like I, so many, I feel like I have learned so much through how other people have loved me and like how, and what I've learned from loving them. And it wasn't like, I didn't wake up one day and was like, I'm a black woman in America. Like I didn't wake up one day and was like, oh, I love myself. And like, everything's just a fall into place. Like, no, it did not happen like that for me. It really, I'm really blessed to have like some amazing friends who are like family and it like, you need to have people in your life that like can see you when you can't see you. You know what I'm saying? Like they like see a better, clearer version of who you are. Um, and they like give you those affirmations that you're not able to like say to yourself. Um, so I think we 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 help each other learn how to love each other. 